I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself up for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear people of God, for us to celebrate in a world with this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for strength. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty of our living God, who adorned the sacred body of your church with the confessions of holy martyrs, grant, we pray, that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jew first and then Greek. For in it is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous by faith will live. The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be known about God is evident to them because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As a result, they have no excuse. For although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the likeness of an image of, of mortal man or of birds or of four-legged animals or of snakes. Therefore, God handed him, them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshiped the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Not a word, nor a discourse, whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. The heavens proclaim the glory of God.
Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is loving and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give arms. And behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch. And he is known to be the third bishop of Antioch because in Antioch, St. Peter was the first bishop. After him came Evodius, and after Evodius came St. Ignatius. So he's well known to be an apostolic father. And we talk of, when we talk of the apostolic fathers, we mean those who saw the apostles or those who saw those who saw the apostles. That is the first and the second century Christians. So it's one man who we can say touched the very core of the faith, which is Christ himself. And so many things are known of him. The first is that he is the first to have described the Church of Christ as Catholic. Secondly, he is known to have said that wherever Christ is, there you find the Catholic Church. And thirdly, he encouraged his people not to do anything without the bishop, who is the head of the church. So with these, at least with these three points, St. Ignatius of Antioch is known and acclaimed as the doctor of unity. And this acclamation of St. Ignatius is so important because in the letter of St. John, we know that it was the desire of Christ that all believers will be one. All those who proclaim the faith in Christ to be one in him without distortions. But unfortunately, today, if for nothing at all, the term ecumenism has become so famous, at times in the right sense, at times in a distorted sense, and at times in a misconstrued sense, because those of us who claim to be Christians, who profess faith in Christ, are not united in him. We claim to be one body, but so many distortions of faith. People are proclaiming A to be faith in Christ, others are proclaiming B, others are proclaiming C. Which is very scandalous to those who are not believers in Christ. And so, if St. Paul is talking about the faith saving us, we pray that we all may be conscious of the very core 
and the integrity of the faith handed down from the apostles, from Jesus Christ himself to the apostles, down to our age. And that this faith which we have received may spread from us also to others. And that through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Antioch, we all may be united in this faith as Catholic, as he prayed and as Jesus Christ prayed. And that if we become truly Catholic, we may be truly united under our bishop and that we may tow the way inspired through him by Christ. And we know that the college of bishops, there is a college of bishops. There is no bishop on his own. There is a college always united under our Pope. So we also pray that the Pope, who also is the head of the bishops of the Catholic Church, may also always be inspired, be available to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit and also work for this prayer of Christ that we all who proclaim faith in him may be united. May this be our faith in our prayer today. God bless us. My dear people of God, encouraging one another in faith, we pray that the church may proclaim proudly the good news of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. And that the baptized may strengthen one another with spiritual gifts, and that the world's people may listen attentively to God's holy word. Let us pray to the Lord. And that the righteous may ensure justice for those in need, that the sick may trust in the faithfulness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. And that we may pray ceaselessly in thanksgiving for our salvation in Christ, and that the faithful may behold God's saving power in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let us put our various intentions before God. We give you thanks, source of righteousness, for you offer us a gift, what we called, what we could never earn. Increase our faith in your Son, that we may encourage one another and be strengthened in your service, and so be made righteous before you, who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my dear people of God, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. May this oblation and our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Ignatius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness, through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending out your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sapa was sent, that he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to the coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Amen. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will. Your whole heaven reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am the wheat of Christ, to be ground by the teeth of beast, that I may be found to be pure bread.
Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast day of St. Ignatius, renew us, we pray, and make us Christians in name and in deed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless and keep you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended go in the peace and love of Christ. Prayer to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Most Holy and Immaculate Virgin, and our Mother Mary, you are perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. Matter of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Let's turn now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother of perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Mario, our priest, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit, in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body, and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased, and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual health. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. 
accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother of Perpetual Health for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising and in committing ourselves to their protect, powerful protection. Hail Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as our mother ready at every moment to help us, grant, we beg you, that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruits of your redemption. This we ask through you who live and reign forever and ever. Saint Michael the Archangel, 